Hello, Val Investors. Thank you for joining me. Today, I want to talk about three pillars that you should focus on to maximize portfolio gains. So, the topics we're going to discuss are experience, patience, and selectivity. So, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to check out my marketplace on Seeking Alpha. It's called Deep Value Returns. I'll tell you the stocks I own and why for balanced argument for the stocks I own. I have high growth stocks that trade at a high multiple and low growth stocks that trade at a low multiple. So hopefully you can find something that appeals to you and I do a totally free trial so you can see, come right in and see if that suits you. Also, if you haven't done already, please subscribe now so you can get my next value installment. So with that aside, let's get started. So. The most important thing in investing is really gaining experience. And this takes time. Buffett has that quote that uh, no matter how talented the person is, some things just take time. You can't get a baby in one month by getting nine women pregnant. So you just have to put in the work. Ultimately, it's very difficult to be a weekend investor. Realistically, a person has to devote 40, 45, an hour a day, at the minimum, five days a week, a kind of getting to grips with business. This is not the same as you understanding your sector. Let's say you're an app developer. Yeah, that's great. But you're leaving yourself exposed to a very narrow circle of competence. That's fine in most cases. The problem is if that is very much overvalued and you're forced to be picked between something that is very expensive to something that's ridiculously expensive, it's leaving you without a lot of margin of safety. So the best way to really go about this is trying to understand your circle of competence, but every so often kind of try and expand that. Even if you have a quite experienced, you might just take an advantage to kind of learn a different field every so often. It's a very attractive way to look at investing. It's just an opportunity to keep being a learning machine. And similarly, there's a, there was an interview, there was a, a talk on um, at the Berkshire Halfway meeting and in the Q&A and someone from the audience says, oh, um, Charlie, you've done great. You know, you, you, you become a billionaire. So looking back in hindsight, uh, how would you do it again? And Charlie just takes a step and says to the audience, so this young gentleman is saying, I want to get rich, as, ri as rich as you, but I only want to do it quicker. Now, the audience laughs, but that's it. You know, things just take time. You can't really rush. You have to build that experience. So the great way to do this is obviously you read a lot of books, but ultimately you want to kind of look in real time as well. So you want to try and understand what's happening in real time. So you just spend a little bit of time looking at periodicals, looking at the Wall Street Journal, Financial Times. I spend a lot of time just looking at transcript calls and just trying to kind of reconstruct what's, what's happening really. So another thing that comes with inexperience is having a realistic target. So if you were having in your mind that you want to compound at approximately 10%, that's that's doable. It's hard work, but it's doable. 12%, 15% is possible. If you think that the rates that people are doing in 2020 are sustainable in any way, that's just nonsensical. There's a lot of just ideology that we are in a new era. Anytime that you're seeing a CEO go on a media outlet and say, this is like, we're accelerating the digitalization of companies. This is, um, we're assisting companies in transformation and putting in COVID and how that, I mean, it ha might have a quarter or two of a boom there, but you know, it's not a new era. And a lot of these stocks are just trading at crazy multiples. Because everyone's kind of become infatuated with the idea that this is a new era and that, that 
old, old, anything that is old and physical is kind of trading at a depressed multiple, and anything that has the the cloud name on it, it is back to looking at a dot com uh, period when every company was coming out, we're just having dot com, and all all of a sudden, overnight, the multiples were extending back then. So it's very similar. Uh, the companies are saying, "Oh, we are cloud facing, or we are a SaaS business that." Is aiming to grow our cloud business. Okay, you gotta be willing to just have a little bit of a step back and think yourself. Just look at the revenue. The revenue for most of these companies, they'll segment it out. What is actually SaaS or recurring revenue, and what is actually consulting or professional services or value-added services. These often don't have the same amount of profitability in the margins. So. You can't really be thinking about adding the same multiple to the whole of the revenue. That's what the company is trying to portray itself as. That look at our revenue, we're getting X amount of revenue, and we should be trading at approximately 25 times forward sales. I mean, you've got to dose that a little bit to kind of okay, what is actually part of the recurring business model. So that comes with just having a bit of experience and just a bit of reading around. So I think that it's quite important to follow a certain number of companies that are making a lot of headlines and not kind of trying to necessarily be invested in them, but just spend a little bit of time trying to figure it out. So moving on to the next point, talking about patience. So before coming on the video, I was, I was having a game of chess and it's a bit like in a game of chess, because in a game of chess, you kind of send that, even if you're not playing chess, I'm sure you can relate to the analogy. You kind of come out of all your pieces, you develop the game, and then you kind of, your opponent's quite strong, and you're kind of having to take some steps back with some of the pieces to really kind of just hold your ground. You're just waiting for the opponent to kind of make a mistake. You know it's just a matter of time before there's some kind of opening up, but you have to sometimes come back to go forward. And that's the same thing with investing. So, don't try to always just chase whatever's exciting and kind of trending right now. Just have to be a little bit patient. And sometimes you can't really get those really great quality companies. And I know very much from my experience that great quality companies don't go on sale for very long. And it's very rich to say, okay, I'm going to just wait around for the Amazon to crash 50% and I'm going to get in. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that there is a lot of companies, for example, I don't have any position here, but for example, Zoom, Zoom just reported earnings, and I know that they're flying high. But you have to dose that, you have to really kind of think, okay, do I really want to be paying about a, in the ballpark of a hundred and something, let's say a hundred times forward sales, that's kind of a pricey multiple. And we don't really know much about the profitability of the company downstream, the actual real gap profitability. So just kind of it's important to have a bit of a dose of experience and a dose of patience the next topic which i think is very important is about selectivity there's a steve jobs quote where he talks about i'm actually just as proud of the things that we did not do as i am of the things we did do so it's being able to say no to a lot of things so I know that the way to compound the great rates of return is every single month, on the first of the month, just deploy X amount into the market, irrespective of the market being up or down. Salary comes in and you invest that right away. So you're not trying to time the market, but it's time in the market that leads to great compounding. I am in a position where I have what I call my open portfolio this is something that i put on the front of seeking alpha i just kind of put there what is my rate of return and i don't add anything there i just kind of and that just whatever i put at the beginning i just compound that for so anytime that i want to kind of deploy capital to a new idea i'm forced to sell out of something that i have a low conviction on that I made it already gone close to fair value that keeps me quite taut that keeps me in shape that I kind of have to think I'm, I'm trimming out what is really not going to see that much more upside over the next three, four years. I'm trying to really be quite critical. So 
what I do with that portfolio, then I replicate that in the portfolio that I'm adding to as a family office that I can, we're kind of adding money to all the time. So it's having this mindset that is in my mind, I like to think, okay, I should have around about 10 positions. Sometimes that kind of goes up to about 12 or 13 positions. They're a bit smaller. I'm just kind of starting out, see how it goes. Because it's very, very important to think like a business owner. I talk about this a lot in my videos. You will gain experience over times, so, but I write down certain rules that I've kind of developed over times, like the checklist, the checklist manifesto, and you, you're basically just trying to figure out your temperament and your investment style. So one of the rules that I always talk about is you buy a position in the company, let's say you buy a stock, you buy 10 stocks, whatever you want to buy, and you wait 90 days. In those 90 days, you will have gone from being a passive investor just watching on side to being in the driving seat as a business owner. You own that business. I always talk about this example that you might be the world's biggest fan of Apple, but until you have bought a share of Apple, you don't know jack about that business. Once you are an owner of Apple, you start thinking much more. Okay. This is what the service business is doing. This is what the margins the service business could do. That's what the service business is growing at. This is what the iPhone business is declining at. You start thinking a lot more about these kind of things. So being an owner of a business and then giving it a period of time. I like to give 90 days as a rule to kind of really give myself time to understand that business. Another example I talk about is when you buy a house, you don't really know the house until you have lived in that house. And I think that's quite important to be a business owner. So. The selectivity comes from having a portfolio that's a 10 by 10 in my mind, even though it might be slightly grown up to 12 or 13 positions. So in today's video, I wanted to address about the fact that experience is difficult to be a weekend invest and just kind of spend a few times a week or something really just checking the share price, whether it's gone up or gone down. That tells you absolutely nothing. You do have to devote a little bit of energy to this. It's a bit like you have to devote a bit of energy to your well-being, you have to exercise, you have to eat healthily, you have to devote a little bit of energy to growing as an investor, trying to think a little bit and build case studies. I also wanted to talk about the, the fact that being patient is very important to not chasing after opportunities, but letting the opportunity come to you. So I, I gave the example of chess, how it's important to kind of sometimes step back a little bit and just really give the opportunity to the stock to come in. And finally, I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to check out my marketplace on Seeking Alpha. You can do a totally free trial. It's called Deep Value Returns, and you can find some stocks that most likely appeal to your temperament. So, hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you